Welcome to Calvary Chapel Eastvale in the park, and happy Father's Day to all the dads that are here today. <clears throat> what a blessing it is. And we want to uh, just thank the Lord for this wonderful day and, and bringing us here, uh, leaving all our cares and worries, Father, at the foot of the cross and coming to you, Father, with a joyful heart, an expectant heart to hear your word, Father, to lift up our voices in worship and in praise to the one, the only one who deserves it, and that is you, Jesus. And as we hear the message today, may our ears and our hearts be open to the message that Pastor Dennis is bringing to us today. And may we just, uh, may we just thank our dads for all the things that they do for us, for providing food on our tables, for providing housing, Father, and just providing support um, for the kids, Father, for the family. So what a special day it is to, to remember them. In Jesus' name, we lift them up. Amen. Amen. biggest fan right there. <laughs> Let faith arise 
In spite of what I see, Lord, I believe. But help my unbelief, I choose to trust you. No matter what I feel, let faith arise. Let faith arise. For my champion's not dead, he is alive.
church. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Let me hear you if you're out there. Let me hear a horn somewhere. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh. Let the 
king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from oh he is my son let the king of my heart be the shadow where i hide the ransom for my life oh he is my son let the king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my soul. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide. The ransom for my life, oh, he is my soul. Cause you are good, you're good, oh. Cause you are good, you're good. Let's open a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you now, Lord. We thank you for this Sunday. We praise your holy name. We thank you for being our Heavenly Father. You are so good to us. We thank you for the salvation that we have through your Son, Jesus. His sacrifice, going to the cross for us, Lord. Dying and rising again. We ask that you would just... Fill us now with your spirit as we continue our Sunday worship in the reading of your word, the study of your word, the application, and the walking 
in your word. We praise you, we love you, and in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day to everyone. You dads out there, did everyone get a, uh, a little gift? We have a gift for all the fathers. If you did not get one, give me a honk and we'll get you one. Great little blessing. And then after the service, don't forget to hit up Kona Ice in the back. We got an ice truck back there. Excellent stuff. It looks like some of you are still in line and getting that. What a blessing that is. So we want you to be blessed for everybody in getting one. I got a, just a few things I want to make announcement of. This sun, this today is our last drive-in church here at the park. Next Sunday we will be back on Facebook and YouTube. So this Sunday is our last Sunday here. We'll go back to uh, viewing it online. You can tune in right now if you like, if you're staying in your cars to FM 88.5. And the children's ministry put together a Father's Day video that you can view on Facebook and YouTube. They put together a great little video. Check it out if you, got your, if you have time. The youth group will be meeting together physically this Friday. Starting this Friday, they're going to be returning back to their once-a-month meeting at the Wisner's house in, in Harupa Valley. We're going to be posting that address here shortly. It's from 6 until 9 this Friday, and they're also going to be having 7.30, a, um, I believe it's an Instagram as well, so where if, if you can't make it, you can still text your questions in and still be a part of the group meeting um, and they wanted to let you know that face masks are required just to make sure that um, we still are uh, keeping the right uh, medical provisions keeping everyone healthy so just remember the youth group this Friday and then on July 2nd Thursday the men will be gathering back together for their weekly Bible study. Starting at 7 o'clock, July 2nd, we'll be meeting at the Martinez home in Norco. So guys, come on out. If you feel as though you can't come out and start off with prayer and then to the study, we'll, we will still be broadcasting it on Facebook Live. So that's this Thursday, is, or excuse me, uh, July 2nd. We'll start back up on that. Um, and then throughout the week, we have our weekly Bible studies. Monday is the Spanish study with Milton. Tuesday, Michelle is leading the ladies in 1 Thessalonians. Wednesday, Pastor Dennis is starting in the book of Judges. Thursday, Ronell is going through the man, Samson. Friday, the Weisners and Chris Ellenberg are leading the youth on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So throughout the week, we'd like you to be a part of it, even though we're still not meeting together. So with that, let's go ahead and grab your Bibles, and let's give Pastor Dennis a welcome. All right. <laughs> awesome. Man, it's so good to be here, and... Um, I hope today is not the last day that we meet here. Are uh, you guys all down for coming, doing this the rest of the summer? Oh, man. All right. So uh, that's going to be on your prayer request board tonight is pray that we're able to stay in the park. So we'll see what happens. I'll ask. I was checking to see if my microphone is on, and it, obviously it is, so. I had a little bit too much Kona ice. So uh, what a blessing Kona ice here this morning, huh? And uh, what about those Father's Day gifts also, man? What a blessing. So, so cool. We got to thank Tires Essentials for that. And uh, so such a blessing. We are in Luke chapter 
15. If you want to turn to Luke chapter 15 this morning. I was at God's Pantry yesterday. We team up with God's Pantry uh, every third Saturday of the month. And what a blessing to be a part of what God's doing there. And they fed uh, 505 families yesterday. Uh, those uh, that were in need and, and uh, homeless, and what a blessing to be a part of that. And uh, God is truly blessing God's Pantry, and I encourage you to come out and uh, be a part of this uh, God's Pantry next, next month, every third Saturday of the month. And uh, God is doing the work, and you'll definitely uh, be transformed. You'll be changed by uh, what God does there. And we have opportunities to pray with families and to uh, feed them, and, and man, what a, what a way to give back to the community and, and just to be a part of what God is doing there. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this day, and we give you uh, honor and glory this morning. Thank you, Lord, for uh, bringing us here today. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful weather, and we pray, Lord, that you would continue just to move mightily amongst your people this morning. Thank you, Lord, for uh, all that you provide, and and uh, Lord, you are working even beyond and even apart from us even knowing. Lord, you're, you're working out details in our lives. We thank you and we praise you for all that you do. And you see the good. You see the end result. And we just pray and we welcome anything you desire to do in our lives we pray for all our dads here this morning. Thank you for all our dads and uh, those dads that have been influences in our life, Lord God. We thank you. And we just give you honor and glory for this morning. And we just ask, Lord, that you just orchestrate this time, Lord God, author our thoughts. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we are in Luke chapter 15 this morning. There was uh, three young men that uh, were uh, in a hospital room and their wives were about to have babies. And uh, so the first doctor walks out and comes up to one of, the, one of the young fathers there and says, congratulations, you have twins. And so he says, wow, that's amazing, because I play for the Minnesota Twins. And so the next doctor walks out and says to the second young father, he says, congratulations, you have triplets. And he says, wow, that's amazing, because I work for 3M. And then before we could get to the third young father, he faints. And so everybody goes over to this young father that's on the ground and revives him. And then the doctor says, what's wrong? Is everything okay? And the man says, yeah, everything's fine, but I work for 7-Up. <laughs> we have two boys and our hands are full. But, man, my hearts are full as well. I, I wouldn't ask for anything different. We have two young boys, miracle uh, boys for sure. And um, uh, we had kids later, and uh, it, it wasn't until after 10 years of being married that we have uh, had the opportunity to be parents, my wife and myself, and, and man, what a blessing. And I think about all that God has done in my life as a father, and, and I wouldn't ask for anything different. I think being a father is one of the greatest joys in my life. Being the father to my son Nehemiah and my son Noah have been the biggest joy in my life. And I praise God for, for the opportunity that he's given me as a father to be able to pour into these young boys and, and hopefully be an influence to them in their future life in this world. And, and uh, you know, sometimes I could go into protect mode and I think about all the things that I go through as a dad. I could go into, I could turn into a helicopter dad. And I'll be watching their every move, their every step. And, and I know it can be a little overwhelming for my boys sometimes. Yeah, they'll, they'll turn to me, and one of my sons is 10, one of my sons is 9, and they'll turn to me and they'll say, Papa, I got it. I got it. And I say, oh, okay, I'm sorry. You know, I'm just, you know, I love you. I don't want anything bad to happen to you. But you know what? For the most part, you know what? If they fall, 
Uh, or if they scrape their knee, I say, man, get up off the, get up off the floor. And yesterday, Noah fell off his bike, and he skinned his elbow. And I said, you know what? He said, Papa, I, I'm done. I'm done. And he started to walk away. I said, no, Noah, get back on the bike and ride it home. And sure enough, he gets back on the bike, rides it home. And then I see him the rest of the afternoon riding, in his, riding his bike. Man, you know, sometimes you just got to be tough. But, man, I just love being a dad. I, and I'll tell you this much. I have made my share of mistakes. I have made my share of mistakes. I, I have at times become short-tempered. I have at times raised my voice. And they haven't been my proudest of moments. But I praise God because despite my, my, my mistakes, God is still doing an amazing work in the lives of my boys. And I praise God for their fear of God and for their love of God and, and for all their desire for uh, the Lord. And I praise God for that. And uh, I can't take complete credit for that. Uh, I, my wife is right there with us and uh, pouring into my boys. And it's just an absolute blessing to be able to behold what God is doing in their lives. And, you know, yesterday, we had a great time yesterday. I, I got this uh, tool cart. It, you know, it was a real glorious moment for me. You know, got a tool cart. I put it together. It took me about two days to put it together. Um, sometimes those instructions are a little challenging. But I put this tool cart together and put the doors on, put the drawers in. And, man, what a proud moment yesterday. We got all the tools out. I had all my tools in bins. So we took them all out. And, and uh, somebody had uh, given me... Uh, a good friend of ours, his, his dad passed away, and he gave me his tools. And he was like an electrician. He, had all, he has all these specialty tools. He has these hand drills and, and, man, you know, just amazing tools. So I had the opportunity. I was sitting down with Noah, and he was asking me, what tool is, what's that for? And the first thing I say is, I don't know. I don't know what it's for. No, I'm just, most of them actually, I did not know. I was, I was asked, what do you think this is for? And it's like, I can't even describe the tool. It's just, what is it for? You know, I just like, if you're an electrician here, you probably know it exactly what it's for. Or, you know, you work on cars, but, uh, but for the most part, there were, there were things that I, I found a compass, an old comp, like an old compass in a brown box, like a brown case. And I said, this is a compass. You measure the, the circumference and the radius with these, uh, this compass. And, and Noah was just like, wow, what's this for? And, and he would ask me what it's for, and then he put it in his own toolbox. And, and man, that's the way. And then there was this little case, right? I got this little case, and I opened it up, and... And I, I'm not kidding. You know, this is, this is not a joke. This is reality. Okay, so I opened this little tiny, it said uh, something dental group, right? And uh, I opened this little case, and there's like a little sponge in there, and it just crumbles. It's so old. And in this little case is a gold tooth. I'm like, what in the world? You know, he kept a gold tooth. His, I gave, it had to have been his tooth. It's, it was a real tooth. And Noah's all, what, what kind of tool is that? I said, it's not a tool, it's a tooth. <laughs> and, and man, we had the biggest laugh yesterday. And man, I cherish those moments. I cherish the time with my boys. We had a great time. Now, we're looking at a story in Luke chapter 15. Jesus is sitting at a, a table right now. It goes all the way to uh, Luke chapter 14. But he's sitting at a table. He was invited to dinner with a group of Pharisees. And, and uh, it, it's probably the last time that they invited Jesus to dinner, for sure. Because Jesus called these Pharisees on the carpet. And, and uh, chapter 15, it continues his discourse, if you will, with these Pharisees at this dinner table. And he brings up uh, three parables. And these parables, if you don't know what a parable is, it's, it's sort of like, uh, in a nutshell, it, uh, it's an illustration of a deep theological point, if you will. And there's something theologically that Jesus wants to bring forth to these group of men at the table. And 
he uses these parables, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the lost son. And we're looking at the parable of the lost son. The overall theme of these parables is what was once lost is now found. That's the, over, over, uh, that's the, the theme through these three uh, parables. We have a parable of the lost sheep where uh, the, the shepherd leaves the 99 to go get the one. He takes the sheep and puts it around his shoulders and, and he brings, carries the sheep home. He pursues the one in need. He pursues the sinner. He approaches the one in need of mercy and grace. I love it. It's beautiful. And then the parable of the lost coin. Uh, in, in Middle Eastern culture, they have these 10 coins that a woman adorns herself at her wedding day. And these 10 coins are um, provided through family members, heirlooms and whatnot, but they're very rare, very beautiful coins. 10 coins. And to lose one of these coins would be like losing your wedding ring on your wedding day. And so Jesus brings up this parable of the lost coin, this woman pursuing and looking for this lost coin, and finally fa finding at last this coin. What was once lost is now found. And now we come to the parable of the lost son, and this is what I just want to make a couple of points here. We see two sons, and we see a father. We see a younger son, and uh, he requests his uh, inheritance up front. And then we see the father, and then we see the older son, and his reaction to his father's uh, welcoming back, if you will, of his younger son. And I'll tell you in a minute how it goes, and we'll read through it. But here we have just an amazing and beautiful picture of what a loving father is. I love the illustration of this father and how he, how he resembles our heavenly father and his love for us. Now, we pick up in verse 11 of Luke chapter 15, and look at this. It says, Then he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Prodigal, that word is wasteful living. He just spent every dime that he had been given. But when he had spent everything, there arose a severe famine to make matters worse, in that land. And he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach, he was hungry, with the pods that the pigs were eating. And not one gave him anything. They didn't make any room for him to grab any food for himself. And notice verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I'm starving here. I'm starving to death. Verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, he's thinking to himself here, He's trying to plan out the way he's going to come back home in his mind. And he says to himself, you know what I'm going to say to my dad? Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And notice this. This is absolutely beautiful. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a distance off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him over and over and over. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him 
and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. He gave him back his authority and his sonship right there. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry, for this is my son. This my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost, there it is, and is found. And they began to be merry. I love this. But I, what I love even more is not the picture of restoration. That's beautiful. But the beautiful picture of the father and his love for his wayward son. Absolutely amazing. We see this father doesn't give his son any kind of pushback when he asks for his inheritance. And in, according to Jewish custom... If you were to ask for your inheritance up front, if you were to say, Dad, can, can I have my inheritance? Can, I have a, can, you, can you give my, my inheritance up front? To say that was to say, in essence, Dad, you're dead to me. That's how harsh of a statement that is. To, to ask for your inheritance up front is to say, Dad, you are dead to me. And the dad, what does he do? Son, you're a dirty, rotten little kid. No, he didn't say that. What does he do? He immediately divides up inheritance and gives it to him. That's amazing. This was one of the highest degrees of dishonor that you could give a parent. The Bible says to honor your father, your father and your mother in, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. And this typical response, the typical response to this level of rebellion was a public slap. They would take this individual and they would actually slap this individual before everybody, before the whole town. And they would receive public scorn as a result. Incredible. But I love the father's reaction. I think there's something for us to ponder here as dads this morning. I've come to appreciate in my, in my latter life, especially the things that my dad had done for me. And there's a lot of things that my dad did for me that I did not appreciate early on and I didn't understand. Sometimes I would question things. A lot of times I would question things. And many times my reaction towards my dad wasn't the best kind of reaction. But it was beautiful what the Lord did in my dad's life and in my life as we turned the page on, on our many days of bumping heads and having differences, how the Lord just totally transformed my dad and transformed my heart. And just in the last quarter of, of his life, how the Lord just totally blessed our relationship and the one thing that I appreciated him for the most was the fact that he was very bold with his face. He had a very disarming smile, just an awesome smile, and my dad just loved the Lord. Just an amazing legacy that the Lord has given me. And, and uh, my dad's been with the Lord now for five years, and Today, you know, Father's Day is always, you know, like, you know, when it, when it hits that midnight hour and, and I'm just thinking, my, because I'm a night owl, that's why I'm up at midnight. But I, I began to think of my dad last night and it, it you know, it, it's bittersweet. I miss my dad. But the beautiful thing is, is that some of those, some of those moments where, where I'm, Sorrowful, they end up turning to joy because of how my dad lived for the Lord. And it was such a beautiful thing. And, you know, I, I fall short many times in many days 
You know, I, I have my moments. And I just remember my dad and the way he would react is it, even, uh, you know, after I became a Christian, my dad just totally would react in a way that was disarming. I'd, I'd say something or do something or disagree with something and he wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't, he wouldn't argue a point the way he used to argue before. And it was totally disarming. It was just, you know, why aren't you coming at me? Why aren't you saying anything? And, but what it was, is with the, it was the Lord working in his life. It was the Lord doing an amazing transformation in his life. And his faith, his faith really shined bright to me in my life. And I think about this father. He didn't react in a way that probably most other fathers would react. They would welcome that public scorn for their children and this and that. But this father was probably most likely heartbroken. And, and we see this father in the way he reacted. I think there's great, a great deal of, of learning to be had and, and influence to be made in our lives as, as fathers and especially in, in the things that we impart to our kids and maybe grandkids here this morning. The concept of working hard and, and balancing out your time at work with your time with your family and you know, knowing how to strike that balance and praying for that balance. Not being overly committed and preoccupied with maybe status or position or work. Not neglecting that opportunity to nurture and, and to pour into our kids. Uh, it, nurturing is not just for the mamas. It's for the dads too. I love to just take my boys and just kiss them. And, and man, I have no problem with doing that public display of affection with my boys. Man, I take them and I, I just hug them and I just kiss them. And, and I think it's so important for us to do that. And not being afraid to do that. Maybe some of us didn't have that kind of affection in our lives growing up for our own fathers, but it doesn't mean that it stops here, or, or that it continues, rather. But it, it, it can stop here. Giving that affection and that display and that example of our Heavenly Father. And I think... I, I, a beetle almost hit me right now. But... I, I think uh, if you see me dodging and weaving, that's probably what's going on. But I think that we have much to teach them and teaching them how to work hard. And, and I, I believe that with the reaction of his son later on, this dad made an amazing impression. Not so much by what he did, but maybe what he didn't do. Now look at this. In verse 17, the boy was out there. He lost everything. Remember, there was a famine. He spent everything he had, right? Now look at this. And this is what we pray for, especially with our prodigals. This is what we pray for. When he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. It says that he had an enlightened moment. He just realized, my dad is so good to me. My dad has been a great provider. My dad has loved me. My dad has been a tremendous example to me. My dad ha is a man of integrity. And he provides for his workers. He provides for his family. My dad loves me. And so it says he came to himself. He had an awakened moment. And then he began to ponder, okay, I'm going to go back home. Okay, this is how it's going to play out. This is how I'm going to plan it. He remembered his dad's kindness. But you notice that his son ran out of everything. Sometimes as fathers, we need to pray and it's a difficult prayer. Lord, if my kids aren't walking with you, I pray that you bring them to their knees. Oh, for some of us, God forbid if that happens. No, well, the greatest need in anybody's life 
especially our children's, is that they know Christ, is that they know his forgiveness, they know his peace, they know his comfort. And sometimes our kids will come to an age where they make a decision for themselves and they can very well make a decision to walk away from the Lord. And that's where we make the difficult decision as heads of our homes to make that decision to pray, Lord, bring them to their needs. Because their greatest need is you, Lord. And that could be very well, but what this dad was praying. It could have been at this very point, at this very moment, that he was praying and this thought came into his son's mind as he was feeding with the pigs, eating with the pigs, that he had this thought, man, my, my dad's servants have it way better. They have bread and they even have, they, they have food and food to spare. But he ran out of everything. He was absolutely bankrupt. He was brought to his knees right there. And the famine that was going on added fuel to the fire. And that's something that sin will do. Sin will absolutely bankrupt that individual who walks away from the Lord. Sin will absolutely bankrupt you. And it's not, maybe not monetarily, but spiritually speaking. There's decisions that need to be made all the time. And I think about all the decisions that I made before I met the Lord, and I, I look at the decisions that I make now. Before I met the Lord, man, the decisions were all about, how am I going to benefit from this? <laughs> hey, what's in it for me? But after I came to the Lord, it's all about, okay, Lord, what's in it for you? How can I honor you? And how can I glorify you? The decision process changes dramatically. And God directs us in that manner. It's an amazing thing when you walk with the Lord. How he opens doors and closes his door. How, how he enlightens those paths that you're supposed to be on. And, and it's, it's just a beautiful thing. And, and those paths that God has called you to be on aren't necessarily always comfortable paths. He ordains the, the blessings as well as the difficulties. And sometimes we, we have to, on that road, experience the difficulties in order, to bring about, in order for him to bring about the result that he desires in our lives, and that's for us to be more like Christ. His desire is always to mold and shape us into his image. Dr. H.A. Ironside says this. He says, it's absolutely impossible for us who were created for eternity... We're created for eternity, for eternal purposes. It's absolutely impossible for us to, who were created for eternity to ever find anything in things of this world to satisfy our souls. Absolutely nothing physical can ever satisfy the spiritual need in your life. And this young man found that out. I think that there's a couple of lessons that we should all want our children to know as loving fathers. And you notice something here. The boy was able to approach his dad. I love that. Sometimes as dads, we got to be careful because we could make it look to where we're unapproachable. We got to be careful with the silent treatment. We got to be careful with the scowls when we're dis disappointed. We, be, we need to be careful. We need to always be welcoming. We need to always be open for our children to return or to come to us with a question, difficult questions. You look at the things that our kids are up against today, in today's, today's age, man, there are, there are there are people that are questioning whether they are a boy or a girl. We have, we have people that are, that are self-medicating today, quote-unquote. It's just absolutely incredible to see what's going on today. But I love this because along with that, we're given a platform to shine the Lord and to preach the gospel and to 
and to display the love of the Father to our kids. The Bible says that we could come boldly to the throne of grace to find mercy and grace in the time of need. The Bible says, ask, right? And it will be given to you. Seek, and, you'll be, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened up to you. That's a message for our kids today. There's a lot of things that are discouraging in this world today, but, but man, how awesome it is that we have the Lord to point them to and that they can approach, our children can approach God at any time. How awesome it is because we hear the prayers of children. There was a post on Facebook and there was this girl, this little girl, probably no more than five years old, pleading for God to change the world. Pleading, absolutely weeping for God to change the world. I melted. But at what a blessing it is to hear our children pray like that. God is approachable. And our kids need to know that as dads, that God, God is approachable. In many ways, we are to our children what they think of God. Their perception of God is seen in the life of their fathers. We, many ways, as dads, are their first impression. And that's one of the things I ask myself. And I fall short all the time, I'll tell you. I'm not perfect. Just because I'm a pastor doesn't make me perfect. And I, I, I fail miserably many times. And that's one of the things I say to myself. One of the things I say to myself is, am I approachable? How am I displaying the Lord to my sons? But our Heavenly Father is approachable. He says, come to me, all those who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says, him who comes to me, in no way will I say, get out of here. Him who comes to me, in no way will I say, get out of here. Remember that veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom. There's no way in their thoughts or in their mind that man could have done that. That veil was ripped from top to bottom. It was humanly impossible. Humanly impossible for that to happen. And that veil was torn with the, min the minute that Jesus said, into your hands I commit my spirit. And what that signified was access to God at any time. At any time. You could be driving in your car and you call to the Lord. Lord, he's right there. You could be in your closet and you call to the Lord. He is there. You could be eating dinner and calling on the Lord and he is right there. You get the picture. He is wherever you are and you open your mouth to him. He is there. The Bible says that Jesus is Emmanuel. What is Emmanuel? We celebrated Christmas. Can you believe it? Six months ago already? You know, Christmas is only six months away. Hate to tell you that already. Absolutely crazy. You know, I put my tags on my car, and I couldn't put my 2021 tags on fast enough. My Lord, 2020 was supposed to be the vision year, right? 2020, bad. Oh, man, couldn't do anything further. But you know what? God is working. And, you know, I'll tell you this much. I may joke about it, but I think a lot of eyes have been opened during this time of pandemic. But Jesus is Emmanuel. What that means is he's God with us. But we see in this dad, he, he, he is approached by his older son and his younger son. His older son just re rejects all this accolades for the younger son. And you think about it. I love what he says here for my son was dead and is alive. And again, he was lost and now is found. And they began to be married. There's Rejoicing in heaven over one person that comes to the Lord. The angels rejoice. And where, this, where everybody should have been rejoicing, this older son was rejecting. And long story short, we won't get into the, the older son because we're, we're done with our time here. The older son was a picture of the Pharisees and their rejection of Christ. And you look at this, and... 
the reaction of the dad towards the older son even. He says, son, you're always with me. Calls him son. In verse 31, and it's right that we should make merry. We should be celebrating. We should be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and now is found. We should be rejoicing. We should be merry. We should be excited over what what God has done here. He's brought your brother home. And I love how he calls his older son to rejoice. And he treats him with respect and love. But there's no differentiating of that love in the dad's heart. I think this dad is what we mourn, what we what the world needs more in dads today. Proverbs 14:26 says this, he who fears the Lord has a secure fortress for his children and it is a refuge. What kind of home are we providing for our children? Wow. That hit me between the eyes, man. When my kids come home, do they feel protected? Do they feel do, do they feel like this is an environment where they could grow? Do, do I provide them with an environment to, to, to grow in the Lord and rejoice in the things of God? Look at this. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9. The commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Talk about the Lord. When you're going on a walk, you walk on the river walk over here, you go to the beach, you're driving, talk to them about the Lord. You know what? God did this today. You know how God provided today? Wow, God did this. Man, God is so amazing. And it's good to talk to our kids about that because God does amazing things. He is doing an amazing thing here this morning with you and me this morning. But talk about the Lord, but look at this. Now this is it. I'm finishing right here, guys. Verse 20. Check this out. I want you to read it really quick. Verse 20. Check this out. Read with me. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He kissed him over and over. He could, he, that's the, the emphasis in the original Greek language is he kept kissing his son over and over. He was so excited to see him. Now, if a Jewish son in, in Jesus' day, in Jewish culture, if a Jewish son lost his inheritance or, or asked for his inheritance and spent it among the Gentiles, and he returned home, what would happen is that the community would perform a ceremony called Kezaza. Kezaza. It's kind of a funny term, but what this word means is this. They would actually break a large pot in front of this son, and they would yell, you are now cut off from your people. The community would totally reject them. They would totally ostracize this young boy for calling on his inheritance and spending it amongst the Gentiles like this prodigal son did. Now, even though you think about it, his son was probably covered with rags and, and you know, there was something familiar about what he saw, he, maybe the way he walked, and he ran out to him. Now you look at what he did, he ran. In the first century, in Middle Eastern culture, a man would never run. If he were to run, he would have to hitch up his tunic, he would have to gird up his loins, right? So he would tie his pants up, and his, his, his ankles and his legs would be exposed. And that's a big shame in the community. I, you know, I can sympathize with that. I don't like to show my legs, man. My legs are all messed up, man. That's why I'm always wearing long pants. It's, at home, I don't. But, you know, but I can sympathize with this. Shame. If a man would run and gird up his loins and reveal his legs, bare his legs, it was shameful. But think about this for a minute. His son returning home 
most likely was returning home in great shame. And what his dad does is a beautiful picture. Because his dad girds up his loins and takes upon himself that shame in the eyes of many in the community and he runs out with his legs all bared, runs to his son and grabs him and begins to kiss him over and over. In essence, that father took on the shame of his son. Does that sound familiar to you this morning? The Bible says, cursed is everybody who hangs on, anybody who hangs on a tree. Jesus, in essence, a curse for you and me. Jesus experienced rejection for you and me. He experienced shame for you and me. It should have been us that received the shame. It should have been us that would, would, uh, would experience that condemnation. It should have been us that was on that cross. But instead, he took our place on that cross and he took upon himself the shame. He took upon himself the darkness and the heaviness of sin. Him who knew no sin became sin for you, the Bible says. He took on the shame for you and me. So that we now, today, if we call upon him because he lived, he died, and he rose again. So now that anybody who calls upon him and believes in their heart that he is risen from the dead, they will be saved. He experienced the shame and the rejection so that we would be welcomed. He was bound for us so that we would be set free. What a beautiful picture that we have in this father, in this loving father towards his son. God rejoices in you this morning. God rejoices in you and he seeks you this morning. If you don't know the Lord this morning, remember he seeks after you. We have a Father who has compassion on us, like it says in Psalm 103. I believe that some people have had hats on fathers, while others have had fathers that are somewhat distant or disinterested and not really engaged in their lives. And sadly, some, some have dads who have abandoned them altogether. And some have had fathers who, who have died, who passed away. But there's one thing that we all have in common. We're regardless of what kind of father we have on earth, we have a father in heaven. And regardless of how our fathers on earth have treated us, for better or for worse, we have a father in heaven who has always been there and always will be there for you. Praise God for our heavenly father. Praise God for his example. And praise God for all of you dads out there this morning. I am absolutely blown away and overjoyed to see all that God is doing in and through your lives this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and for the opportunity that you've given us. And Lord, many of us are in the same boat. We've blown it. And Lord, we, in the midst of falling short or blowing it with our kids, Lord, you have given us a an opportunity at a second chance. And Lord, we thank you for that. And I thank you, Lord, for everybody here. I thank you for those that are listening on Facebook, Lord. If you're here this morning and you want to receive the Lord, I just want to give you an opportunity. The Lord's provided this opportunity, actually, to receive him into your heart as Lord and Savior this morning. If you don't know the Lord, you can commit your life to him. Maybe you've walked away from the Lord and you want to commit your life to him this morning. He's waiting for you. He's pursuing you. So with every eye closed, every head bowed, nobody looking around, if you want to receive Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, if you want to develop that relationship, it starts right here, calling upon him and turning your heart to him. Just repeat this prayer in your heart out loud and mean it in your heart right now. Repeat after me, dear Jesus, Please forgive me, because I know I'm a sinner. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me and dying for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
with that prayer, just let us know. Post on Facebook. We'll send you a Bible. And if you're here this morning and you receive the Lord, please come up to the stage and let us know that you receive the Lord. And we want to give you a Bible and the tools that you need to grow in the Lord. God bless you guys. Sorry I took too long. I'm like 10 minutes over. I'm sorry about that. But uh, God bless you guys. Uh, I praise God for all, of, all that the Lord is doing in your lives. And uh, don't forget, right behind you is Kona Ice. It is heated up. Please have as much as you want. We took care of the bill already, so please go back there and have yourself some Kona Ice on us. God is, is totally awesome, and he's doing great things in and through you. God bless you guys, and I'll let you know. We'll let you know through Facebook if we're going to continue here. Hopefully, we're able to continue here. So we'll see what happens. Pray for us. God bless you guys. Love you. Enjoy the Kona ice. Love you guys.